tonight in this stadium. This is absolutely electric. <laughs> Noah Lyles promised us gold. Katarina Johnson Thompson is the champion of the world. Uda Sege undefeated in 2023. Goodness me, Katzberg tastes gold for Canada. He is a one-off champion. Take a bow for Bree Shango. That was sensational. One, two, three. The incredible performance from Shikari Richardson. Hello and welcome to the World Athletics Championships 2023. We're live in Budapest, Hungary for the 19th edition and providing you with a dedicated feed of the women's discus throw final. Well, once again, look at that weather. If you've been following us all week, it has rarely changed other than the first morning where we had a huge downpour. 32 degrees, a clear night, a little bit more wind in the stadium this evening, I have to say. Well, I'm Jenny Meadows, and I'm delighted to be taking you through this women's discus final. This is how our top athletes progressed to the final. It was 64 meters, the automatic distance. No problem for Sandra Perkovic of Croatia. She went in Group A, 65 metres, 62. In fact, we had five women who achieved that automatic standard. And really significantly, all five featured in that Group A qualification group. Of course, only one long throw group happening at a time. Bin Feng, the reigning champion, was also in that one. An athlete from China, 65 meters, 68. You can see that gold bib that indicates that she was the gold medalist last year. She comes here trying to defend that title. Two groups happened, it was two days ago now. Both the groups happened around about 90 minutes difference. And again, it was another athlete, Valerie Alman. Well, she went out to the farthest to throw of anyone between the two groups. 67 meters 14, the reigning Olympic champion. I think some of the throwers would have thought the conditions were a little bit more favorable for the athletes in Group A. Well, it's all even Stevens this evening. All 12 finalists, all competing at the same time. No advantage or disadvantage. Very, very satisfied with that one. Well, we will have two pages of the athletes who have made this women's discus throw final. There are the first 10. We will have a second page with start order athletes in 11 and 12. Nine nations represented and a really good mix of athletes from around the globe. Italy, Cuba, France, Portugal, two athletes from the USA, three athletes from Germany. So, so good at the long throws. Athlete from the Netherlands, Croatia and China. Well, another good crowd packed inside the National Athletic Center this evening does hold 35,000 people. We've had some rough estimates. There has been around 25 to 35,000 packed in every evening. We 
haven't had a morning session this morning. We have got a morning session tomorrow. The first time the World Athletics Championships has run over a nine-day schedule as opposed to the 10-day schedule. And that is the Croatian flag. And those spectators will be cheering Sandra Perkovic home. And I'm sure they're hoping that she can win a sixth World Championship medal. Well, it will be quite remarkable. She ties in the best amount of medals ever won in this event with five. And what about those for some statistics? The world lead is actually Valerie Alman. She's in this competition, of course, the reigning Olympic champion at 70 meters at 25. And we're going back into the 1980s to get that championship best performance and the world record. But I've got to say, Sandra Perkovic and Valerie Alman are two of the best ever in this event. And absolutely fantastic that they're in the same era as each other. Well, those are the implements. You see that some of them are numbered. Each of the athletes has their own specification of discus that they prefer. So let's meet the 12 women who will be contesting this World Championship discus final. Daisy Osaku from Italy, national record holder. Selena Ottere Morales from Cuba. This is her first World Championship final. Well, this woman, it's her 10th World Championships, her ninth final. Melina Robert Michon of France. Liliana Cha of Portugal never medaled at global level. She has been fifth in the Olympic Games. She was sixth in the World Championships last year. Lelaga Tusaga from the United States of America, former Pan American under 20 champion. Another athlete making her debut in this final. Chenise Kraft has made the final previously, but it dates all the way back to 2015. Second of the third athletes from Germany, Claudine Bitter. She was the bronze medalist last year on home soil in Munich. Jorinde van Klinken from the Netherlands. She was an amazing fourth in Oregon. She just slipped out the medals in the real depth of the competition. And the third of the German competitors, Kristin Pudence, the Olympic and the European silver medalist over the past few years. Well, this is one of the athletes who knows what it's like to get her hands on a World Championship medal. She's got five of them at home, Sandra Perkovic of Croatia. The reigning world champion from China, Bin Feng. And if you had to pick a favorite, very difficult. Some amazing women in this field, but maybe, maybe Valerie Alman from the USA with a world lead and the farthest throw in qualification. Valerie Alman could, could just have the edge over the rest of the competitors going into this women's discus final. So these women have already been out here today. They've had a feel of the circle. Shadow practicing, and just getting a feel of it. Of course, they have already been in the circle two days ago, but always nice to get back out there again this evening. We talk about the fine measures in this sport. I think that's what makes track and field so unique. Every woman guaranteed three throws. Got to get a big one out there to guarantee an extra three throws. That is a courtesy that only the top eight women will get. It really doesn't leave 
Much room for error. Well, it will be Claudine Bitter from Germany who will start proceedings. Just see that she's using some chalk there. A lot of women do this, especially on a very hot, humid, sticky evening. And I can imagine that is a must for most of these women. So remember, it was 64 metres to make this final. Bitter, what can she do in the first? Well, it does surpass the 60 metre line and she does get the white flag. So Claudine Bitter does get this World Championships off to a good start. There is a measurement just over 60 metres, 60 metres 29. Well, it won't challenge her season's best. That does stand some six metres in advance of that. Didn't see any big throws in the men's equivalent, other than Christian Che, who really did just get off to a great start. But they kind of came round four, five, and six, deep into the second half of the competition. As Liniana Char starts her competition. <laughs> she sticks her tongue out, didn't make much of that effort. We're very much guided by a lot of these athletes' facial expressions. I think it was Goodsus of Lithuania last night. He was entertaining me with his facial expressions. 58 metres, 86 for Char in round one. National record holder Daisy Osaku from Italy. The World University Games winner in 2019. I'm pretty sure that did take place in Italy, so great for her. Oh, and you saw that one right into the netting. That's always an indication that the athletes have just let go of the release point a little bit too soon. We did see a few fouls in the first round in the men's equivalent last night. The queue then will have to wait for round two to really show her presence in this competition. Sandra Perkovic of Croatia. She's used to coming out, hitting it hard in the first round. She's got such a good track record. Two-time Olympic champion, five world championship medals back at home. One gold, two silvers and three bronzes. Oh, and Perkovic really suffers the same fate as Osaku from Italy. Right-handed thrower. Cross goes into the right-hand side of the netting. So that's not the start Perkovic wanted. She is a big time performer. As is this woman, first senior world championship final, but she has medaled at world youth level and world junior level. That's the under 18 and under 20 categories. So Morales from Cuba, that looks good. Well, that is the best throw we've seen so far out of the five women who have had their first round throw. Still doesn't look like it is approaching 64 metres, which was that automatic standard to make this final. 62-31 it is for Morales. not much time to take a breather between all of these women 
stepping up into the circle for their attempt. Olympic and European silver medalist Kristin Pudence from Germany. Let's see, she's already got the discus in the palm of her hand. Ready to get her World Championship final campaign underway. Very, very tall athletes. See, she's adopting a real wind up stature from low to high. And that is good for Pudence. She allows herself a little bit of a smile there. That throw probably won't feature a Pumpson medalist once we get to that stage late in the competition, but it's a solid start for Pudence. Well, this woman went out in excess of 67 metres two days ago. And we saw on the BT at the beginning of the programme, she celebrated that one, she liked it. Has gone out to over 70 metres this year, 70.25, against a personal best of 71.46, which came last year. 2021 and 2022 were real years coming of age of Valerie Adam. Well, Alman likes that one, and so she should. Well, that is certainly further than the 67 metres 12 that she achieved in qualification. Alman has come out hot in this women's discus final. Sixty-eight metres 57. Well, that is medal territory. Bin Feng, when she won that title last year in Oregon, she won it with a throw of 69-12. So Ullman almost there already in round one. And Feng really up for this one. Long levers, so, so important in this event. And followed by the shout. Well, it won't challenge Almonds, but it'll certainly go into second position. A real interesting athlete, Feng. She went into that World Championships last year with just one competition under her belt. She had achieved 66 metres. And that's about the distance she's already achieved this year, but she's competed a lot more this year. Here we go, season's best for Feng. 66-97. Well, this woman certainly knows how to peak for a global final. Janice Kraft of Germany. Said in the introduction she has made a final before. Some eight years ago in Beijing. And just looking if she managed to maintain her balance there. I think she has been given the white flag, so that one will be a valid one. Just looking at that tape, that support on her shoulder. So tough, this event on the joints, the shoulders, the hips, the knees, the ankles. They all really are. So, so tough, these women. You've got to have the skill, you've got to have the technique, you've got to have the power. You've got to have the prowess as well. That was 63-59 for Kraft. Jorin van Klinken of the Netherlands. Fourth in Oregon last year. And what about that? Van Klinken is a real powerhouse of this event. She isn't as tall as some of the other competitors. Bin Feng has got to be one of the tallest athletes out there. But she really does get some power, some trajectory behind that discus. 
63-93 for Van Klinken. That's good enough to go into third position. So athlete 11 and athlete 12 coming up to Saga of the United States of America. One of two American women to make this final. Really handy there to see that graphic. World ranking of number eight. That indicates she's a real consistent performer. She was supposed to make this final, and she did. And that one does veer out, out of the sector. So it will be a foul for Tusaga of the USA. Daisy Asakwe, she put it into the netting, didn't she? And so did Perkovic. That was an early release for them, as opposed to a late release of the discus from Susaga. Well, this woman, I've got to say, she's a couple of years older than myself, and I hung my spikes up seven years ago. This is her 10th world championship. I made it to six, which is pretty good. Just unbelievable longevity. Melina Robert Michon. She's got all the experience. But that one really fell short, well short of the 60 meter line. Just didn't get any height, unfortunately. And I think she's used all of that experience. I think she's just walked outside the front of the circle. Oh, indeed, she didn't. It was measured at 53.34. She must have thought, you know what? I'll get one on the board just in case, just in case. I need it for a second throw on countback, just in case a couple of people foul out completely out of this competition. So let's have a look at the standings. Let's remind ourselves at the end of the first round. It was this woman, Valerie Alman, with the green bib, which indicates the world lead. 68 meters, 57 in the first. Reigning champion of Bing Feng, season's best in second position at 66.97. And Jorinda Van Klinken of the Netherlands at 63.93. Join Claudine Bitter of Germany for the start of the second round. Bitter went out to 60 meters 29 in the first. That looks like it could have a couple of meters advancement on that first round throw. Another athlete there just having some support tape on a joint, knee joint this time, as opposed to a shoulder joint. I think it was uh, Shanice Kraft who was having that shoulder joint strapping. So Vita, 62.51 is an improvement. She moves up into sixth position. Really interesting to watch the mannerisms of these women. Just saw Valerie Alman again, just shadow practicing. That's 68.57. That will have guaranteed that she has six throws in this competition. I can't imagine there's going to be more than eight women. That would be uh, absolutely unbelievable if eight women went in advance of that. You know, it's tough out there for the competitors, but what about the coach support systems? Really nice to see a big crowd gathered around that discus cage. There was a pause in the action in this women's discus final. You could see the 400 meter women hurdlers just going past them in the background. They're at their semi final stage. Liliana Cha of Portugal. Oh, 
don't think she'll mind me saying. She had a disappointing 58-86 in the first. Oh, and she's followed that up with a foul in the second. And again, another athlete who's finding the cage instead of finding the ground out there on the grass. So this is going to be very, very tough. A chair to come back from this one and get those extra three throws. Daisy Asaku from Italy. It was a foul for her in the first. Nine women got themselves a mark after the first round. And off the queue, has got herself a, a mark now. It is over the 60 meter line. Maybe a meter or so in advance of that. Indeed, it's just come up 61 meters 13. Oh, she's hanging on to an automatic extra three throws at the moment. Very surprised if 61 meters 13 is good enough for a further three throws, but let's see. Sandra Perkovic will use all of her experience in round two. She wants to get a safe one out there. I don't think anything that Perkovic does would be safe. She's very, very competitive. She'll be looking to take a medal home from this championship. She'll want it to be the gold. And that just stays inside the sector. Oh. Well, I can see two judges looking at that one. Yep, she shakes her head. I'm not sure what that one means. She really, really was keeping her focus on that. And it was very, very close to the left-hand sector. I'm going to say she was half a meter or less inside that sector. Yeah, just not clicking for Perkovic at the moment. But she has gone out to 66 meters at 57. Which unbelievable believe Perkovic does indicate a season's best. So she's into the bronze medal position. That gives her a real chance to build now throughout the four subsequent rounds. Well, this Cuban woman, just 22 years of age, that's very, very young for a discus thrower. Well, that one drops down well short of the 60 meter mark. She did go out to 62 meters, 31 in round one. I did some calculations just 24 hours ago for the men's discus final. The average age of the 12 finalists was 27.5 years. The average age of these women is 29.5 years. So plenty of time on the young Cuban side, just 22 years of age. Halfway through round two with Christian Pudence from Germany. Went out to a solid 63-81 in the first how she bends her legs to start that wind up. She goes from slow to fast, from short to long. And again, it's over 60 meters. And I think that one will be further than the first one. Certainly not going to challenge Perkovic's 66-57. It's a 
two and a half meter gap between fourth position and third at the moment. Fourth position, Van Klinken of the Netherlands. And Pudens, 53.94. She leapfrogs Van Klinken by one centimeter. Well, as far as first rounds go, I think Valerie Alman will be very pleased with how it went for her. 68 meters at 57. Christian Che went out to round about that sort of distance in his first also, 68, 69 meters before he got over that magical 70 meters in round six. Well, Ullman certainly put everything behind that one. I don't know whether she forced that one a little bit after that very encouraging 68-57. I think she willed that discus to get out there onto the field. And I think at the end, she saw it dropping down maybe the last five ten meters or so I think she was a little disappointed she didn't get closer to that 70 meter line but 66 97 66 94 should I say that is the third farthest throw so far of this competition Bin Feng of course with the second 66 97 she really psychs herself up, doesn't she, before she even starts her throw. Well, again, it looks halfway between that 60 meter and 70 meter line, maybe fractionally closer to the 70 than a 60 sure whether that'll challenge her 66 97 I think it'll fall a meter or so shy of that yeah indeed it does 65 16 for Bin Feng in the second well I don't speak Chinese but I definitely understood the sentiment of that a little frustrated. But that here's the high standards, the high expectations when you come into this competition as the reigning world champion. It was just such a nice coming of age for Bin Feng last year in Oregon. She had made two world championship finals previously, placing it fifth and eighth respectively then she took the big one last year in Oregon you know, Valerie Alman so dearly wanted to win that on US home soil she did pick up a medal it wasn't top of the podium for her it was Bin Feng on the top position Sandra Perkovic for the silver and Valerie Alman for the bronze Shandai starts her second round 63 59 in the first what can she do in round two and again that discus just drops down I said the same when I commentated on the men's final there's not much wind at all in the stadium discus throwers they love a headwind they love throwing into the wind discus really does take flight it stays up there for longer in our weather graphic caption it did say five kilometers per hour wind I can feel it's a tiny bit breezier than last night I think it was two or three kilometers per hour wind but that really really is good conditions on the track but not for these discus throwers as Van Klinken from the Netherlands 
goes in round two. She was ranked third at the end of round one. She's already dropped down to fifth in round two. Going to take 66 meters 57 to get in that medal territory to regain one of those top three positions. She doesn't look too impressed with it. I think it was an improvement. And indeed, it was 64 meters 41. She found half a meter. She's going to have to find what another two meters get into those medal positions. Tusaga then from the USA. The only woman so far not to get a valid throw out. That one is a valid throw. But she will remain in 12th position. Been just not working for her yet this evening. Fifty-two meters twenty-eight for Susaga. Melina Robert Michon from France is our twelfth and final competitor to round up round two in this women's discus final. Well, it was a slow to fast wind up. There was almost no middle section. She just got through that throw very, very quickly. There was almost a beginning and an end. I don't know where the middle bit was, but look at that. Look how fast that arm is coming through. And I think she'll be happy with that one. Has she moved herself up into the top eight? And indeed she has, seventh position, 63-46. Some 10 meters improvement from her first to her second round. Robert Michon in her ninth World Championship final. So round three it is, Claudine Bitter of Germany gets us underway. She's in eighth position. Oh, and I think that one it was a good one for Vita. Just trying to see what she's already recorded. She's got a 62 at 51. Well, that certainly looks like it's gone out further than that. I'm sure she doesn't want to be holding on to that 62-51, hoping to get through to that final. She'll be hoping she could have improved on it. And she has. She's still in eighth position, but 63-19. That was a significant improvement. Another 69 centimetres on the board for Vita. That could prove really, really valuable. <laughs> Liniana Cha of Portugal. Well, she needed that one. 58-86 in the first, followed by a foul in the second. We've just seen what it takes to get into that top eight. Bitter currently holding that with 63-19. What has Chart done? Oh, she's gone out to 63-59. Bitter will not take an extra three attempts. What a shame for the German athlete. She'll be so disappointed. Chase stands a really good chance now. Daisy Otter too from Italy. Well, it's not been her evening. She'll be really disappointed to not advance to that top eight. National record holder for Italy. Oh, 
Well, it's like losing a good friend, isn't it, at this stage of the competition? And yeah, so, so disappointing for the Italian, but brilliant to see her reach her first global final. As Perkovic asked the crowd, come on, get behind me. She's shouting out to the infield. It's almost like she's giving the discus instructions. OK, this is where I need you to go. Around about 70 metres that way would be very nice, thank you. Already gone out to 66.57. Oh, but she suffers the same fate as the first round. Discus ends up in the net and it ends up in the cage. Let's have another look. Really, really long arm span. Oh, and she does well. She keeps that, those hips in front of the shoulder. Did the shoulder just drop? Well, Perkovic, she'll know she's got the luxury of another three throws. I'm sure she would have liked to have already got a big one out there in the first half of the competition. Well, it's a big one that Morales needs from Cuba, 62-31. She's certainly capable of that. Sixty-three forty-six are the figures of Melina Riber Michon, who's holding onto that eighth yeah. position so far. Well, I think she knows. She knew as soon as she'd released that discus, it's not going to be enough. And indeed, she just steps out of the front of the circle. So we've lost another. Morales will take no further part in this women's discus final. It doesn't matter what's happened the rest of the season. It's only what matters on the two most important days of the year, the qualification and the final. But Christine Pudence of Germany, she's living up to her world ranking. <laughs> Always expect to see the German woman's name on the start list in a major final. That was good from Pudence. She's had a 63-81 in the first, followed by a 63-94 in the third. I'm thinking that's going to be enough to leapfrog Van Klinken of the Netherlands. Indeed it is. 65-73. Pudence moves up just outside the medal zone. This would be a good time for Ullman to get one out far onto that infield. Really get one, put one away to make the other athletes think, you know what, there's the gold. I've got a second, second for the silver and or the bronze. Ah! Well, another consistent throw. And I think that one could be around about 69 meters well she certainly thinks so too i'm gonna say it's further than the 68 57 which came in the first round so so consistent She does extend her lead. Well, Bing Feng came here with a season's best in the mid 66 meters. She's approaching 67 meters now. Can never discount this woman. Alman has gone out a few meters further than her during the course of the season. But Feng is rounding into shape.
Russell. I was so impressed with the men last night. 71 meters. 41 to win that title for Daniel Stahl and 70 meters 02 for Christian Che in first and second in not the most favorable conditions for this discus throw. And Alman is really showing some incredible form with that 68 79. Sandra Perkovic just chilling out there. Maybe visualizing what she needs to do in the second half of this competition. Janice Kraft of Germany. This is her third and <laughs> attempt. I oh, nearly said third and final attempt. She, I'm sure, will have a further three throws. She's still in sixth position. facial expression a little grimace that she's done after every round I don't know if I'm reading too much into that just seeing that strapping I don't know when ever she's just nursing a minor niggle on oh, 65.03 for Kraft she advances from sixth to fifth position just behind her teammate Pudence Van at Clinken, 63-93 in the first, 64-41, building nicely. That one again looks to me around about 63 meters. Oh, she's not going to improve her position after round three. Sixty-two ninety-four. To Saga of the United States. This is a very, very important throw for her. She needs to launch an absolute monster to stay in this competition and she has all right all right she shouts all right well that was more than all right that has just got her an extra three throws to saga when the pressure was on she came through the pure emotion this is what sport is all about digging deep having to find your very best Let's go! she was about to pack her bag and it's a personal best 65 56 centimeters a little bit of technical advice what drama right at the end of this halfway stage. And Melina Robert Michon could do with some of that herself. She's in ninth position. Oh. And again, that discus just falls really, really low out of the uh What a shame for Melina Robert Michon. That's not the way she'll want to end her 10th World Championship appearance. She has thrown some very, very good throws this year. And unfortunately, not on the evening when she needed it. She has thrown her sixth farthest throw of all time this year, which is quite incredible given the longevity of her career. Oh, we're getting the broom out. We're making sure that circle Nice and clean. 24 throws to go in this women's discus final. And these women do 
spark up some great friendships over the years, over the circuit. We will say goodbye to four competitors now. It will be Robert Michon, Vita Morales, and also Q that will take no further part. And we'll be starting off round four with the eighth best thrower from the first half of the competition. We go eighth all the way through to first. And it will be Linea Liliana Cha from Portugal to get round four underway. centimeters was the vital distance that kept this woman in the competition but it will be a foul for Cha in round four There we go. So it was just two valid throws so far for Cha. She launched at 63-59 to advance to the final. Jereen Van Klinken, she's in seventh position. And that looks better for Van Klinken. She has gone out to 64-41. That one's got to be approaching. Certainly around about that distance she's already achieved. Maybe heading out towards 65 metres. Well, the woman in sixth position ahead of her is Shanice Kraft with 65.03. Oh, and it is an improvement, but just six centimetres for Van Klinken. She remains in seventh. Well, those are the four women. Going back to the warm-up area. They've played their part in this discus final. Janice Kraft of Germany. Sixth position, 65.03. She's just more than half a metre to get up and challenge for one more position. Really handy there that we can see the lines indicating championship record and what it takes to make that gold, silver and bronze medal position so far. So 65.03 is her best, remember, she's 65.56 to move up. Well, it's a 65.47, so she's closing in into Saga. To Saga, that brilliant personal best in round three. I wonder whether she had considered this might be my last throw in the World Championships. I'm going to launch a big one, or am I just going to be here to enjoy it? She didn't want to be a passenger in this final, and absolutely brilliant to see her achieve that lifetime best when it matters the most. It's only personal best so far from these 12 finalists. But Sasaga, what can she do? Fifth position so far. Well, that one looked like it went out. Could she have done it again? You know, I think there's a chance that she could have beat that personal best. I'm gonna put my neck on the line and say she has. 65-56, can she have followed it up by a second consecutive lifetime best? Let's have a look. Oh, it was a no throw, I missed that. Oh, I missed that one, it certainly did go out further than the distance she got in the third. Kristen Pudence from Germany, 
fourth position. She doesn't want to be fourth position. She was second last time. I don't think that's going to challenge her best of 65-73. Well, excuse me, she wasn't second last time, it was Tokyo. It was the silver that she won in Tokyo rather than Oregon. It was an interesting debate what athletes would take. Would you take a world medal or would you take an Olympic? Both, of course, are the global stage. But I think that Olympic medal it would, certainly in my case, just have to edge it. Well, this woman has got two Olympic Games gold medals, 2012 and 2016. She was fourth in Tokyo. Got a shot next year, it's got to be say. Always there or thereabouts in global finals. Sandra Perkovic really put Croatia on the map in terms of athletics. She's a real global figure around the world. So, so dominant. We were talking about 2012. Terrain for over a decade is really, really something. And look at the precision on that. She just manages to halt, just put those two feet together and just use all that core stability all that glute strength to stop herself over rotating absolutely incredible given the forces that these athletes pull through the body 65 at 64 for Perkovic Bin Feng from China already gone out to that season's best 66 97 she's put a 65 16 and a 65 91 to back it up. And that one looks good for Bin Feng. She's certainly challenging her own mark of 66.97. Almond 68.79 is not in danger. But has Bin Feng guaranteed herself a medal going further there in round four well it's another season's best so yes she has 67 meters 18 for the defending yeah. champion well i could hear ullman wiping her feet there we saw the circle getting brushed earlier Mats to make sure these <laughs> athletes don't bring any debris into the circle with them. Oh, and that was huge from Alban. I think that one's the farthest throw we've seen this evening. I thought her previous was 69 meters or so. It fell just short, 68-79. Well, to the naked eye, that one looked marginally further. Are we going to see a 69 meter? throw the first one of the evening indeed we are 69 meters 23 Alman is here she's ready and what about that she's thrown the three farthest throws so far from the whole of this competition Liliana Cha of Portugal. She gets round five underway. Really, really does go quick this competition, especially when we're down to eight women. Oh, frustrating for Cha. On another foul. She's just not leaving herself enough room at the front of that circle. Sounds pretty obvious, doesn't it, when I say that? 
see a lot of throwers manage just to rein it back and they manage to get half a step backwards. You've almost got to give yourself half a step gap between yourself and the front of the circle to be able to do that. Unless Perkovic, who uses every inch thanks to that great, great skill. And Klinken in the fifth round. Still hanging on with that 64-47. Now that one's further. Yes, indeed it is, a season's best. So it's round five, and what about that? 67-20, Van Klinken. She's knocked Perkovic out of the medals at this stage of the competition. And it's a crucial two centimeters further than the reigning champion, Bing Beng, as well. All change in round five, as Shandice Kraft takes to the circle. She's been pushed down into seventh position now. She's always been hovering around about fifth. She won't advance any further up the leaderboard now. Certainly not in round five. That was a foul. First foul that Kraft has had this evening. She had a pretty accurate scorecard until then. But what about this woman, Tusaga? That was a huge one in the fourth, but it was a foul and she stays inside the circle this time. What has she done, Tusaga? Well, even Tusaga cannot believe what she's just produced. Well, certainly Tosaga has gone into the silver medal position. Is it enough to take the gold medal position? Well, what has this American done? She has 69 meters 49. She'd already gone out to her personal best this season, 65-46. She's just put four meters on that personal best in one evening alone. Well, that is a thing of dreams for Chisaga. As Christian Pudens of Germany gets her fifth round underway. Well, it's a magic round five. I talked to Met about the men's shot put a couple of nights ago when everything came into round five in the World Championships last year. We didn't need to wait for round five this year. Ryan Krauser was number one from the word go. But look at that, to Saga, four meters. Personal best in the World Championship final. I wonder if someone would have said to her 20 minutes ago, this would be the position. I just don't think they would have believed her. Well, it is an American 1-2 so far. European hopes at the moment align with Van Klinken of the Netherlands. Perkovic pushed down into fifth position with 66-57. Well, this wasn't in the script. Well, it's a good, good throw from Perkovic. Doesn't land in the netting, doesn't veer off outside the sector, doesn't even come close to that, but just not the distance. Oh, she knew it, didn't she? She didn't have to follow that discus. 
with great interest. She knew straight away, no, that's not going to be good enough. That's not going to get me in, back into the medals. 65.09 for Perkovic. How much she wants to win a sixth World Championship medal. Something no discus thrower has ever done before, male or female. Bin Feng also been pushed out of those medal so far, but has she just got herself back in there? Well, that line is very, very handy. Yes, she has, certainly from that graphic, it would suggest she has. So 67.20 is the figures that Van Klinken from the Netherlands has gone out to. A season's best, so we know it's in advance of 67.18, which hey. was her season's best. 67.41, Feng is back in the medals. Well, Valerie Alman was having it all her own way round one through to four. And it came along her American teammate. Well, I don't know how friendly they're going to be after this. <laughs> if this remains the same result, Tusaga just having the competition of her career. That is what it's all about, that gold medal. Allman, 69-23 versus Tosaga's 69-49. Needs to find 26 centimetres. Beautiful athleticism once again from Allman. But that one is her least farthest of the whole evening. And that's the only time we've not seen her congratulate herself and clap in sheer joy to her efforts. Well, we had an absolute corker in the men's equivalent 24 hours ago. These women, they saw the drama that the man gave us and they're just providing us with another iconic World Championship final. So going into the last round, Saga from the United States, absolutely ripping up her lifetime best form. 69 meters, 49. Look how emotional she is. Valerie Alman, 69, 23. Bin Feng, the defending champion, 67, 41. Van Klinken out of the medals. So is Sandra Perkovic. Liliana Cha from Portugal. She needs to find a couple of meters to move up from eighth position into seventh. Well, she stays in the circle this time. And the discus does go out in advance of 60 meters. I'm not sure it is going to be her best of the evening. I think she is going to finish in eighth position. Well, it is good to see her get another throw, a valid throw out there this evening. That one was 62-49. So Liliana Cha, her fate has been sealed. Eighth position in this World Athletics Final 2023. Shanice Kraft of Germany three times European bronze medalist. She's got to put in a big throw if she's to get in the medals in this final. But it's a solid throw for Kraft. She acknowledges the crowd. Yeah, she's kind of had that look a little bit of frustration on her face all the evening. She's going to leave the National Athletic Center in Budapest, Hungary, with a best of 65-47 this evening in seventh position.
So we had three German women make this final. Absolutely incredible feat for this nation. They love the long throws in Germany. But Christine Pudence is once again the best of the German women. 65-96. That came in the previous round in the fifth. That magical fifth round. But that one goes into the net in. Well, it will be a solid result for Christian Pudence. You know, the Olympic silver medalist will have been hoping for more. Once you have tasted being on that podium, there's nothing more that you like to get back on there on a consistent basis. But this is a field full of some of the greatest of all time. This woman being one of them. Sandra Perkovic doesn't know what it's like to go home empty-handed. She was fourth last year in Oregon. That was one of the first times she's experienced that. How dear she would love. I'm sure at this stage she would take any colour of silverware home with her. 60. 7.41 it's going to take. Oh, no. And that was slow. It was laborious. It was a real short step across the circle. Oh, and she knew straight away. Sandra Perkovic returning home to Croatia for the second year in a run without that global medal. Well, the good thing about athletics at the moment is it's a global championship almost every year. We've got the big one next year, the Olympic Games, of course, in Paris, and then another world championship to follow. Jereen Van Klinken then, one last attempt for her to get on the podium. Oh, it's decent, but just, just short. She's had a good evening, has the Dutch woman. She's gone out to a season's best of 67-20. Well, she put her hands up more in hope, I think, than anything. She is ranked world number three on throws this year. That was 66-97. So it was her second farthest throw but our medalists have been decided if Feng cannot improve to 69-24 that's because Ullman has got so many big throws backed up she will go home with a bronze medal oh and how far has that one gone well it is going to be the bronze for the reigning world champion she consolidates her form with a bronze medal here in Budapest. And once again, she finds her best form at the championships. I think she has thrown further again. Well, that's the third time we've seen that graphic during this competition. Season's best for Bim Feng, 68-20. That bronze medal has her name on or it will have her name on very soon. All the athletes get their name engraved on those beautiful medals. Alman. She went home last year with a bronze medal. She's upgraded it to a silver, but I know she would love to win this title. So 69-49 she's looking for. That was very quick in the circle oh and it falls just short well what about this for a series from Almond? 68 57 66 94 68 79 69 23 she dropped to 64 60 and backed it up with another 68 61 if there was a medal for consistency this woman would have it but there we are, that is confirmation. 
the saga will be crowned the world champion. Oh, and look at the emotion. Will she be able to hold her composure? Will it be another big throw? Or will she just finish the throw and just be so, so satisfied with her effort there this evening? It's another huge one. Tasaga has put together the best three throws of her career on the most important evening of her life thus far. Well, the sheer emotion of the moment. 68-36. As Sandra Perkovic congratulates our new world champion in the women's discus throw. Well, this is where the celebrations can really start to begin. I don't think Tasaga is going to be sleeping very much this evening. It's going to take her a couple of days to let it sink in what feat she's just achieved. As Valerie Alman will go home once again to the United States of America with some silverware on the global stage. You're a world champion. Yes, you are, Lalo Good. Tusaga, the champion of the world. But what an emotional evening for everyone who's been involved in this woman's career, no doubt. Has been Feng once again gets her hands on another medal. She's really proven that any time you get into a global championships, rip up the world's best list. It's about what happens on the evening. Well, these are the images that will be broadcast all over the world. That star Spangled Banner. We expected one of them for sure. We expected it to be Valerie Alman. That's a saga. Well, it just shows you when you come to a championship, you peak, you know the dates that you've got to peak for all year long. It just shows you. Forget the form book. It's all about the preparation that you've been putting in. And I wonder whether there's any insights. I wonder whether there's some things that have been going really, really well for this woman this year. And I love to see this. Just showing her appreciation to the officials. They work so, so hard during this championship. And I think this is probably something that this woman has never experienced before. Just having so many cameras wanting to take her photo. She's not used to being in the limelight. I'm going to go through some of her credentials. She's a good athlete, of course she is. She was second in the US National Championships. That, was, of course, was behind Ullman. This is her first World Championship final. Never made it to the top eight at global level before. And she comes in number one. Let's not forget how significant her third throw was. She started number 11 on the order. She was halfway through packing her bag up. She was going to be one of the four women going home early, watching on maybe from the stands see the final eight really fight it out for those last three medals and she got herself into that top eight and she got herself to the top of the podium there it is that instant medal moment and maybe this woman more than anybody else at those world championships you, needed you, you, and appreciated that instant medal moment it makes it real
before she bites it. Yes, it's real. It's not made of foil, one of those ones with chocolate inside. It's the real deal. And in a couple of hours' time, that will be sent to the engravers and it will have her name on it. The medal presentation will be tomorrow, which I always think is very, very nice. They have that instant medal moment in the stadium. They get to go home, they get to sleep on it, very little sleep, I think. And they get to have the second moment of celebration in the medal plaza. Something that I know is a big, big hit with a lot of the athletes. Why have one day of celebration? Let's roll it into day two as well. when she knew she had won. That was when Valerie Ad Alman took her last throw. And she's like, okay, there's only me remaining in this competition. No one can overtake me. The title is mine. Can you believe it? Well, yes, we can. Champions rise to the occasion. And Tusaga is a very, very worthy champion. She comes from Spring Valley. She studied at the University of Iowa. She has a major in communications. And I'm sure everyone in the United States of America will be celebrating everyone in Spring Valley and everyone at the University of Iowa. You get a global medal around your neck and everyone remembers any sort of time or connection that they've got with you. Oh yeah, we're really good friends. You get friends out of the woodwork like me tell you that but absolutely brilliant just looking through her form during the year I've got to say it's been very very up and down 64 meters 34 in qualification a couple of days ago for this final she did achieve that personal best getting a silver medal in Eugene Oregon at the US National Championships Plenty of time she's gone in competitions this year, throwing just over or just under 60 metres. And this evening, she almost went out to 70. Almond must wonder, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? What is it going to take to lift that World Championship crown? Well, she will have another attempt. These World Championships will come up again in another two years. Never too long to wait in athletics world. As the three medalists get their flags. They acknowledge the crowd. There's a huge crowd gathered there. And really nice to see all three of these women going around the track with their respective national flags, really enjoying the plaudits. It was just a fantastic competition. USA flag we see it in the track but we also see it in the field just such a strong nation in every single discipline I always say no matter who it is no matter what the name is if you've made this US team at a global championships you're a real contender Well, this is a lot further than Daniel Stahl got on his victory lap last night. I think it was around about 40 metres. 
I think the women are going to make it round the whole 400 metre circuit. And why not? Tisaga clinging on to that medal. And you find all the energy, all the athletes are skipping, all the energy when it's gone well. When it's not, you feel really tired, really lethargic. Oh, never mind one night. Tisaga, she's not going to sleep for a week. Budapest, Hungary. It's been an absolutely enthralling 90 minutes. but they become your friends. You have this shared experience. No matter what discipline you're in in track and field, there's such a mutual respect. You know it doesn't come easy in this sport. You've got to put the hard yards in. You've got to put the hours and hours of work in. And all of these women deserve those medal winning moments. we will be able to wrap up the whole of the results from the 2023 World Athletics Women's Discus Final. There are your medalists, gold, silver and bronze, Tasaga, Ullman and Feng. Just the one personal best out there this evening. And she beat it three times. Our new world champion, the women's discus, Leluga Tasaga from the United States of America. Melina Ribert, Michonne finished in ninth position, just an incredible feat. Her 10th world championship, and Morales and Asakutko there finishing in 11th and 12th position. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to be able to bring you this dedicated field feed of the women's discus throw. Hope you've enjoyed it as much as myself. There's not going to be much sleeping going on for that new world champion this evening. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again.
Oh my God! 